Welcome to Alien Theorist Theorizing Case File 280. The Wendigo. Wendigo? Wendigo? Wendigo. Wendigo. The Wendigo ain't your baby. What? The Wendigo ain't your baby. Yeah, it's, uh, it's actually pretty fitting for this case file. Right. Uh, <laughs> I'm Braden. I'm Zell. I'm Dan. And I'm Andrew. Um, just a trigger warning. Even we are not going to discuss all the gruesome details that uh, are attributed no. to the. I'm going to actually. I'm going to go. I'm going to push past it. I'm just going to start saying. Push past it. No. <laughs> um, Did you listen to like? Oh my god! Oh, terrifying! I absolutely. The, I had to pause. It. I hit a pause is, button more than a few times. It is honestly. I don't know if there's a fucking scarier cryptid or creature invented than the Wend- Wendigo. Are we sure that this is a creature, a creature, a creature, or is this the fucking boogeyman? Like, this is the fucking most horrifying thing I think we've ever discussed. This is a prime evil, in my opinion. Yeah, it it, it is 100% a prime evil. As we we approach, (laughs) or we have Diablo 4 release, this is a prime evil, in my opinion. I'd rather run into Sasquatch in mating season than run into this motherfucker. Wearing a a fursuit. Yeah, anytime. Yeah. Like, no thank you. (laughs) Because it's it it is definitely one of those ones where you're like, and I don't think we've I can't think I was trying to look at like movies and stuff that have anything's done it justice. And I'm like, no, nothing has ever captured how fucking truly terrifying these things are. Uh, hashtag look it up because there is some fucking gruesome details and gruesome crimes attributed to this thing. That we are not going to discuss here. We might glaze over some of them, but you know you can find that stuff on some fucking <laughs> on Reddit, <laughs> on Reddit or something. A um, couple docs. And listen, like, do yourself a favor, like Brayden, look it up because it's not like for me who grew up a comic book geek. This is not the window go I knew. This isn't a big jacked white dude that looks like the Hulk, right? This no. is not at all. No, this is an emaciated thing from your fucking nightmares. Yeah, like, this itself. thing. It, yeah, it's awful. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so uh, the Wendigo literally no redeeming qualities to it. Uh, the Wendigo has entered into the like the popular Western media in the last probably the last couple decades or so. Um, <clears throat> like the 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 Wendigo is is pretty much like pulled from uh, the folklore of indigenous peoples in the Great Lakes region, mostly. And, so, part, and, yeah, and just and just to clarify, like while it's gained popularity, like this, this is old. This isn't a thing that was just created, you know, thirty years ago. This is there's records of like something like this for hundreds old. and or, oral history of the native people of the area for right untold uh, the, generations. Right, and then like some of the the popular depictions that we have these days, um, some of them are eh, like some of them not exactly like <laughs> what would be considered like accurate as to like the original uh, incarnations of the of the Wendigo and conceptions of it with, from the original tales and folklore of indigenous yeah, people. Like um, I said, we fucking lightened it up for a good time. <laughs> Like, right, it's true. Yep. Well, I was like, for, oh, yeah, well, this is, and then I was like, oh, like, oh my yeah, God. we didn't know. I had no idea. We didn't know. I when like, I suggested oh, this, who, I was like, oh, was this like, is awful. Who, suggest, who suggested this? It's but, terrible. But, but like you said, like it, this about. thing, this thing is so old. Like you're discussing, like this thing didn't even come into like, oh, I, what do you want to call like pop popular culture or even just like um, horror fiction until 1910 by that Algernon Blackwoods. Like he wrote a story about this thing. Like that's when the first, like when the general public started hearing about this thing. So it's been a, like, this is an OG fucking miserable creature. <laughs> like, yeah. So, uh, from what we can tell, roughly translated the word Wendigo, uh, also spelled in a, a number of different ways, such as Wendigo or Wendigo, uh, means evil spirit that devours mankind. Um, how never Wendigo though. Just a <laughs> never Wendigo. Never a Wendigo. Wendigo. Okay. Uh, it, not from now until on, today. Yeah, <laughs> on, in Western Canada, in close circles, you know, you're trying to lighten Wendigo. it up, like you said. It's, yeah, it's a little yeah. bit. It's cuter. You can yeah. merchandise it, right? You make a little yeah. Wendigo. Wendigo fucking. Yeah. Oh keychains. my God. The Wendango strung up your baby. <laughs> oh, uh, 
<laughs> and there there are probably a number of other translations, but they all pretty much equate to the word for cannibal in, in most of the native languages. Uh, you know, so according to the legends, the, the original legends uh, that we, we pull from, a Wendigo is usually created um, whenever a human resorts to cannibalism to survive. Um uh, and usually this is attributed to the the creation of this creature is attributed to the uh, the times in the past where starvation was something that was constantly hovering over people's heads like this was especially this was very in this much area a, especially yeah, in this like area great, with the harsh winter area and, like super harsh long cold disgusting winter so <laughs> there was i was able to find like doing some digging i found two potential origin stories both from Algonquin origins, but one was supposedly a great warrior who made a deal with the devil in order to save his tribe from extinction. And in, cha in exchange, the devil turned him into the Wendigo uh, and he was excommunicated from his tribe. And then the other one kind of fits more like what Dan was saying. Um, it supposedly it was a lost hunter who was during a brutal uh, cold winter, the man's intense hunger drove him to cannibalism. Apparently he went hunting to feed his family, was lost for a few days, ended up running into somebody. Somebody was like, hey, like, do you need help? And instead of taking his help, he took his muscly man meats in his mouth. And, and, uh, no. Yeah, and it's <laughs> it, it's uh, it's funny because I read another, I was reading a, a theory that because people, one of the, many f holes i went down uh looking up this one i thought this was kind of an interesting point that it's like well you can't really attribute that to all all cannibalism because there's been there's been cases where you know like the the rugby players who crashed right and they had to resort to cannibalism uh on the frozen alps or whatever right they're like well they, you know they're not wendigos as far as like as far as we know maybe not but so then um it's because it didn't happen in canada well, yeah, that's true. Area. That's true. It wasn't in Canada. Canadian cannibals uh, on their land. The the other thing that I saw was that it's the spirit has to be in the area, and basically it's tempting you to do this when there's an alternative. Like yeah, there's a harder head. there's a harder route, but it's telling you to do this. And when you do this, then that it takes you from there. Like it, it, like when you succumb to the temptation of it. I, when listen, there's we like, all know we all like in here in Canada we know we deal with the Wendigo on a regular basis when you're finished eating dinner and it's but, telling you to go back into the pantry yeah, you're like, no, I'm yeah. fucking full I'm Buddy, full it's, it's fine and then you're all in you, there fucking mucking Snickers bars and you're not even hungry for all you Americans <laughs> you don't even know because it's anarchy from about October to May in Canada <laughs> I mean the Wendigo is just in all of our ears eat your it's friends whispering yeah. <laughs> Eat your friends. Just a bite. Just a there's bite. Gonna, there's no, there's going to be no more food. Eat your friends. <laughs> right? Like it's just a constant, constant battle. Alex like Jones I actually, go, I think, anything... almost turned into a Wendigo one time. Did he, he, he was right. eat he his did. neighbor or something? He was yeah, going to eat his neighbor. Uh, eat your ass. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Uh, but yeah, it's so there. There's like there's it's 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 interesting how these how it's kind of come to be. Uh, so when the Wendigo manifests like visually so it can it can take the form of a spirit uh, which is known uh so it can it can also it has the ability to possess people so it's, it's you know it has an incorporeal form but it also has a an office <laughs> just corporeal just turns your friend into like a fucking dancing t-bone like <laughs> oh, what, what are you looking at me like that for <laughs> oh it's like dancing food like, let's all yeah. go to the movies yeah yeah, yeah I get it. Um, like your buddy's just a big old thing of popcorn you're like yeah so like, go ahead have a bite uh but one of the one of the more classic descriptions of the the corporeal form of the the wendigo comes from basil johnston who's an ojibwe teacher and scholar from ontario canada and it's kind of goes he goes quote the wendigo was gaunt to the point of emaciation its desiccated skin pulled tautly over its bones now, with its wanna... bones pushing out against its skin i, I like i don't want to distract too much but like you this this is a common theme the the emaciation this you know it's slender it's tiny and it's like i'm very let's for something that's on a high protein diet i'm confused you think it would be a little bit more fucking rocked up <laughs> it's only taken in fucking right like it's got a super high metabolism that doesn't eat enough that's what's going yeah, on it's, right. it's the unsatiable thirst zell knows i've also it's heard though, cousin, Dan, actually i don't know if you've heard this too but like as it consumes more people it gets bigger right like they grow when they get a little bit more fucking imposing as they consume more flesh 
Uh, yeah, usually I think the height is usually a, uh, most of the stories kind of have it like, is it a giant in size? Maybe anywhere between like uh, 10 and 14 feet tall uh, is usually kind of the, the average height Huge. for a Wendigo uh, when you do see it. Um, sometimes they so, also are described with some type of like sometimes antlers. Like big, like almost like elk, like big fucking antlers. Uh, yeah, from what I read, that's actually like a more recent development. Like more that's a more recent age. addition. Yeah, it's a more recent addition to the the Wendigo. Uh, it's like, scary. It's, yeah. like, it's that's the one scary. thing we didn't. The one thing we didn't sugarcoat is his appearance. We made the appearance scarier. Its actions less scarier. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, it's the other descriptions of it have a, one of the other uh, kind of grisly descriptions is that it it, it has this it, its appearance is like its lips like often its lips are tattered and bloody because it keeps like gnawing on its lips because of its insatiable hunger for human flesh no, and so if it can't find it it's just like chewing off its lips essentially no, that's the uh, that's just the every single Canadian gets it in the winter it's so goddamn dry yeah. right your lips crack like you wouldn't believe. Right? Uh, and then you're and, sucking... uh, usually it's constantly surrounded by the this miasma of uh the the eerie odor of decay and decomposition uh What's death and corruption yeah, you gotta, it's yeah, like a, yeah, yeah, like a fog like a oh like, a fog, like, like pig like pen a, oh, so it's like yeah, an aura nice. like like an yeah, aura yeah. kind of yeah yeah, yeah kind of yeah, like, like, like stank pig pen yeah. like pig pen yeah yeah like pig pen yeah a stanky a stanky cloud like a mist ish yeah. kind of thing okay. yeah all right yeah i got you now yeah <laughs> what was the smart word you used miasma miasma okay i'm gonna yeah. remember that i'm gonna say that to someone and then <laughs> act re so offended when they don't know <laughs> um so the Wendigo, uh, besides its its uh, you know terrifying appearance, it does have a number of uh, like uh, supernatural abilities and traits that are attributed to it um uh, the the Wendigo does not necessarily like I it, it doesn't like hunt it doesn't it doesn't like actively like, kind of chase people down it says that uh, usually people say that our legends say that it does it doesn't pursue its prey uh, it uses a little bit more of a, a clever method where it has it has the ability to mimic human voices. And it will use this ability Over in order here. to lure people and draw them away from their settlements or whatever, like out to where they would be, you know, where they would be vulnerable to attack. Supposedly, like predator. it can actually like, it, it can completely imitate the last, its last prey. I think appearance wise as Abs well. Absorbs like the life yeah. force. It's and aura. It's Essence. Oh, buddy, that get that makes me that makes me think back to those those poor kids in uh, that went up the mountain yes. in California. Yeah, the uh, the Yuba County. They got Yuba County. Yeah, the Yuba yeah, County and fire. they got spotted with that pregnant woman, and then was like, well, "Who's that pregnant woman?" I'm like, "Who was that pregnant?" Did she woman? have antlers? Wendigo. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know if we we probably we probably made that connection, but we it. I mean, it's just it's such a freaky thought to be in the woods and then just be like, if like, to, to paint a picture here, if you're camping and you're like with your friends and you're like, you hear like a hey, guaranteed everyone just stops, but buttholes pucker. I'm like, oh, gee, you don't know who's I, there. I could see like if the wind, windy goes close, the forest goes like drop silent. Oh, 100%. Like all the birds stop chirping. Or if the night has gone, gets if it's a night, if a nighttime the owls stop, the crickets stop, it just kind of like, and then there's a little whisper. Well, it's because the fucking miasma is scaring them all away. But you know what? To be honest, though, from what I read, it doesn't, it doesn't actually just come out at night. It's all, it's all the time. So it's just like, it's, it's a crazy thought to be like, you'd be like, oh, I'm going for a hike, and then you just hear something you're like, hey, help me, and you're like, oh, who's that? Should I go help? No, you shouldn't. So moral of the story: Don't help anybody. Don't help anyone don't help unless anybody. they're if and if when dig the Wendigo ever learns to yell fire instead of help, we're all in trouble. We're fucked, right? Now we always talk about missing four on one Bigfoot. Could all be Bigfoot? You could attribute a few to a. Uh... Well, I I was thinking about that too. I it was one of the kind of the avenues of thought I went down. The thing though with Wendigo is it it seems that. It's not like it takes someone. It's not like it it causes someone. It seems like it's 
wants to pos- it seems like it's a possession right like it control like wants to take over the person for the most part and like make that person do awful things while probably eating them yeah so it's it's almost like it's controls you like a marionette like it's always well, the, around, i think but the like, i think the like the, like the spirit or whatever possesses the person right and then they become yeah. the windango and yeah then, and then yeah. it can transform and then they, back into what it was yeah, yeah. Fucking creepy boys. Uh, yeah, the 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 Wendigo, like most most of it, is seems to be like centralized around like the Northwest, like a, so like around the Great Lakes region, around like that southern part of can like that part of Canada as well. Um, like there's actually there's actually like a Wendigo Lake, apparently. Uh, don't that's just there. a <laughs> yeah, just like I don't know why you would name it yeah. Wendigo Lake because I mean that's that's just where horror movies start. Like that's, I don't yeah, like, that's I, where it's layer. That's where a known layer is. Yeah. You stay away from there. That's probably where that fucking hell hole is that someone get remember in classic channels that guy kept calling about the fucking hell pit? Or the spook yeah. hole. Spook, spook hole. hole. <laughs> that's probably the same spot. Hell pit. Probably crawled out uh, of the spook hole. Yeah. Um yeah, so you have this Wendigo Lake, and apparently there's a like, there's a there's a legend that comes out out from that area as well about um about the death of a wendigo where they manage like a, a like a tribe of of native americans managed to capture it and then uh burn it like they capture it in like a hole and then they uh they set it on fire with a bunch of brush and stuff that they throw down in there and they eventually kill it but the thing is when they when they burn it uh the the ashes from the creature actually turn into mosquitoes therefore Oh, perpetuating no! its flesh eating like to to consume the flesh it just keeps consuming the flesh as mosquitoes that's and that's why mosquitoes really have no point <laughs> yeah in the animal they're just dead they're just dead when to go there's dead when and they just they suck the blood from they're really not doing anything except spreading disease and being little shitty fucking insects yeah. And being a food source for bats Tr- and some other yeah, they, 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 yeah, they would, the bats would involve the other other insects they don't need the mosquitoes no, we don't. Get rid of them. Talk to them. Uh, that's a, it's an interesting that's an interesting thought because my brain went to this the Wendigo can speak mosquito and just like it's just like it's tempting us, it tempted the mosquitoes. Right? And they turn. fell. They were they weren't as strong as we were, right? And so, that's why the mosquitoes in this area are the size of your palm. Yeah. Special Wendigo mosquitoes. Special supercharged <laughs> yeah. mosquitoes. Three, three um, bites and you faint from blood loss. That's what happened. Yeah. And, and there's a number of uh, legends. Like sometimes sometimes the Wendigo is featured as more like a like it's like a transformation, like like uh, uh like Andrew was saying before, that it's something that they ask for. Like a person asks for the strength or they ask for something to to help their help their tribe fight off like a rival or something like that, or, or enemy warriors from a different from a different tribe, and that they will often like call for that power in order to to fend them off. Uh and then, you know, something happens where it's like eh like that so um yeah we should, maybe shouldn't have you know the price the price is too much or you know yeah. the, the, what it is but the um the, the main thing that a lot of a lot of the legends of the wendigo are about like they're kind of, they're kind of considered cautionary tales they're always meant to kind of uh display or kind of like uh be able to be related about the the excess of greed like excesses and like what you can go to and sometimes the, the wendigo is a person who is like wholly affected by just greed like they just like you know they're eating too much food and stuff like that so then they start eating people like it's just kind of something that it's a the, the the purest expression of just avarice and then you become this creature that it's that you can't be satisfied by anything um you just keep on going and feeding and wanting more uh, is one of the things that you always find out about these creatures <laughs> um no, that, that, that i mean that it's it seems like it it's yeah it's like once the, it gets its its foot in the door with the temptation of it and then it's like yeah you can't so, so it's, it's like, like king king midas kind of thing like yeah we'll give you the power but then you, you can't stop like there's that's the downside of it it's you're never satiated yeah so your next thing is humans like i don't know yeah. Get the thing a fucking Snickers bar. 
Let's go. And uh, usually, usually <laughs> in, in most of the stories, not yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that'd be a great Snickers commercial. Right? That's what this do. guy like, <laughs> not, they're like fucking deep in the woods camping, and one guy's like gnawing on another person. He's like, "Whoa, buddy! <laughs> Looks like the Wendigo's got a hold of you." Here, have a yeah. Snickers. <laughs> and the Wendigo's like, ah, <laughs> withers away. Um, it's great. Yeah. So. Uh, Copyright. Speaking to that point, yeah, there's no, um, it's some of the stories include like, there's not really any like cure for Wendigo. Like if, if it does get to, it does possess your body. I mean, the only things are mostly like the, the usual kind of exorcisms and stuff like that. There are like, you have to consult with the shaman and all of that. And they yeah. have to perform a certain rituals and ceremonies in order to exercise the Wendigo. I mean, it does seem like most people just lean into it. You know, when, when it's in its spirit form yeah like it can, i think it can be it can be exercised when it's like an actual in, in the stories where it's represented as an actual physical creature um often it's like you have to one one of the legends includes like inside e, inside each wendigo like the physical manifestation of the wendigo is like a regular person like a regular man is inside therefore when you want to slay the wendigo you have to stab the man in the heart like you have to stab him through through the creature into the the man inside so you gotta remove his icy arm um, and burn him no for, it's see i heard it as an old it. analogy uh and then eat it in eat, and perpetuate inside, the wendigo cycle <laughs> inside each of us is two wendigos one good one evil right <laughs> what comes out is up to so you yin and yang. how you live your life <laughs> yeah like so all and wang dingo yeah uh, so it's you know you just choose which one you want to be the good Wendigo or the bad one uh, uh, it's I a, think that's how it goes yeah uh, yeah that's, that's probably true <laughs> that's the same I've heard that one yeah many times it sounds it rings familiar in my ears when I say it aloud <laughs> oh it's yeah. fucking ancient Canadian fucking lore buddy yeah. We, all know, we all grew yes. up on those tales. Yeah, it's a that's Canadian a... heritage moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's up there with the fucking house hippo. Yeah. yeah. Remember, Canadians, inside each of you is two Wendigos. <laughs> one pure, one evil. That's why we're always saying a sorry in there. Say we're so everyone's so nice. Because we know we have the capacity Capability. for yeah. for unbelievable evil in yeah. every in inside the hearts of every Canadian. Yeah. Every Canadian is Unspeakable on the edge evil. of cannibalism, like twenty four seven. Like they're just like a hair's breadth away from just <laughs> sinking their teeth into some human flesh at any yeah. point. So everybody thinks Can everybody thinks Canadians are super nice, nah, dude. <laughs> just one mosquito bite. Away. They will eat. You, they will eat you in a heartbeat. Hey, you like a, seen us when we're like cats. Like cats. Yeah. You know, cats got the chance. They eat you. <laughs> they would. They eat no, you in they ten do. minutes. Yeah, it's <laughs> awful. We've heard a couple of stories. Uh, a little fucking savage piece. Nose and earlobes gone. Gone. Yeah. <laughs> Real quick. Cats are windy goes. So that's like yeah. Can't convince me otherwise. Uh, now there there are there are certain cases uh, that have historically that have been associated closely with the Wendigo. Like the Wendigo is invoked and and. In some of these, uh, in some of these cases where somebody has committed some unspeakable atrocity, and usually it involves, you know, uh, people from Native American indigenous tribes and things like that, where something has happened, um, and you know, it's it sometimes it comes out as the, you know, the Wendigo did this, and there are there are times where there are disappearances, uh, mysterious disappearances that have happened. And, and nobody can you know for sure i think there was there's a story of like a, a certain couple uh that uh from one indigenous tribe in one of the the great lakes areas that like kind of went missing and nobody could tell that they eloped they didn't think they had, had left to get married or anything like that but it's actually people were like no they disappeared because the wendigo took them they went out into the woods at night and didn't come back um trying so to answer it, a call for help so it's not like that but one of the more well-known cases is the case of swift runner uh so uh swift runner also known as kaki uh, kaki si kuchin uh was a member of the plains cree tribe in the canadian province of alberta now um from 
all reports, like he was well known among the tribe. He was popular. People liked him. He was nice. Um, and he was also like a, he also cooperated often with the Northwest Mounted Police, um, which he he would usually act as like a guide or uh, like a guide or a tracker on multiple occasions. Um, this one they had. Yeah. <laughs> um, so he was married. Um, you, know, you know, he was married and had uh, six children, uh, apparently. And um, had. and so like everything was just like this guy was just all around pretty, pretty good guy. Pretty solid dude. Like uh, he's also huge. Like he was also like a very like intimidating, large. He was well man. over 200 pounds. And at that time, 200 pounds. Yeah. Is... Have you ever seen one flew over the cuckoo's nest? <laughs> Same guy. Uh, um, that in so long. Same guy, uh, predator. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, uh, Swift Runner may have fallen on hard times because shortly before the winter of eighteen seventy eight to eighteen seventy nine, uh, it, it seems that he kind of fell into like a deep depression, and he became like you know, I guess he dealt with that with, as, and he turned to alcohol. So he became an alcoholic, and um, he often had violent binges uh that actually ended up getting him fired from the northwest mounted police and expelled from his tribe um you know and so as a result of this he had to take his family uh alongside his mother-in-law and he took his brother-in-law as well um, oh, oh oh my god that's brutal could you imagine fucking up no. so bad that you get banned from a tribe that you have you to take, take your, your mother-in-law oh what does she do? That was just <laughs> she would have punishment. been nonstop being like, like yeah, you do something so bad that even your in law gets banished. And that's yeah, you your brother in law and like, your oh, mother in law. Your in laws God. have to go with you. Um, yeah, uh, so they ended up moving into a, a remote camp, um, uh, like out into the out into the far, you know, bit of the deep wilderness uh as it were for for the winter so things you know were going pretty pretty bad like uh, this is this is late 1800 so going out into the wilderness is this isn't a vacation this isn't like a summer this isn't a winter cabin you know nicely appointed with your no <laughs> wood fireplace and, nicely insulated no and no a no. canadian a canadian winter in any kind of like in northern alberta anywhere fucking... east of the rocky mountains brutal Forget about it no brutal <laughs> Um, now something happened out there, um, and the first then, but nobody really knew what, um, until, uh, Swift Runner actually returned to civilization after the winter, like months later. And, but he only returned alone by himself. Solo. And he kind of like, he kind of like, alone. yeah, he walked, he pretty much like walked in and uh, to like the, the Catholic mission there, and he talked with the priests um, uh, that you know, and, and telling them you know they were asking questions because he was still a well-known personage around that area, and they were kind of like you know, yeah, last time we heard about you, you, you were out there with your family, like like where are they? How how is everyone? <laughs> yeah, how is your family? And what he told them is he told them that his family had starved to death, all of them. Like they had starved to death out there, um, and uh, during that that whole harsh winter, they had just all succumbed to starvation one by one. Um, and the Catholic priests were, were kind of ready because that is that does happen. They're like it's probably yeah. not something out of the ordinary that did happen. But the one thing that kind of made them suspicious of this of this explanation is that Swift Runner was huge. Jack. Yeah, he was still over two hundred pounds. He, this in perfectly health in perfectly good health, according to them. Well fed. Uh, yeah. and so they're like, well, how, how are you still looking this good when, yeah. you know, you're not, you're not all bones. Uh, you don't look up, look like a person who's been starving all winter. Exactly. Um, so he had some other in-laws, uh, you know, besides the brother-in-law and the mother-in-law that, that were worried about the rest of the family. Like they were now, people were a little bit suspicious as you would be perfectly reasonable um, to be suspicious at this point. <laughs> that's something that's something that happened. Or even if it's yeah. like, well, if they starve to death, we still want like their bodies, like, you know, we give them a, a proper burial or something like that. I would assume is some of the reasoning for this. Um, so they decided to, to rope in the Northwest mounted police uh, who at, at this time, they'd only been in the West for about five years. It was like, 
I, I mean, it's one. like one of those 10 star shares. I think that's like, you're like, you're the police now. Like just, <laughs> this is, yeah, like, down. This is, you know, in Canada, this is still wild West times. Like there's not, not a lot of civilization yet right now. Yeah. It's the wild North, wild North. <laughs> Um, so they had one inspector Severe Gagnon, uh, who was actually given the task for investigating the the Swift Runner story. Now he he explained, like he, he like he cooperated with them and he told them that you know that, that there was a small grave near the camp where he had buried uh, one of his boys after he had died. And um so Gang Yon and his his detachment, like they they dug up the grave. They were like, okay, and they found the bones in there of a small child, and that seemed to line up with Swift Runner's uh story. Um, but when they went to go check out for the rest of the camp, they saw what they saw there it definitely didn't didn't follow the story. Not as, everything as closely. followed the story as far as what was in the camp. But just before we get to that, we're gonna take a short beer break. We're going to be trying to muster up the fucking strength to get through this. Yes. We, we got to yeah. reset. We got to reset. Yeah.
We're back. <laughs> uh, so now, uh, where we left off is where the <laughs> the Northern Mounted Police were, you know, uh, escorting uh, Swift Runner Swift Run- to yeah. the camp where he had been residing over the over winter uh, with his family, who he had said had starved to death. They had shown him the grave of this, the his one of his younger children that he said that had died. But when they went to the actual entered into the camp proper, um, what what met them was something that was it's very difficult probably to describe if if you've seen it. Now the entire camp seemed to be just littered with bones uh, where it was. And the majority of these bones were not animal bones. Like from what they could tell when the, when the human, when these, we'll uh, give it away when human skull. (laughs) Yeah. When the officer, when the officers, like they, they looked at these things, like they could tell, like these were, these were not animal bones. These were human bones. uh, Many of which had been just cleaned, like just cleaned and clear of flesh. Like all of it was gone. Um, Some of them had had, like been cracked open. The marrow was sucked out. Uh, They could, they could tell from these bones uh, that were left there. Um, and so if if that wasn't enough, like they said that they actually like in, inside the camp, they found an actual pot full of human fat yeah. that was oh, like sitting next to boiling had to yeah. boil for a friend. Yeah. And and from from there, I mean, it was pretty easy to tell, like, they, yeah. they you know, that the the, they came to wet dream. They, they came to their pretty quick conclusion that Swift Runner had killed his entire family and ate them well he at least well, cannibalized them. them like not not gonna get into gory details but i remember like they were like mentioning like oh that that's like a human skull and he's like which this one and like scooped it up by the eye holes and like holding the skull in his hand like uh, i had <laughs> zero regard yeah for um, zero remorse either he'd been infected yeah, with the like when dego curse yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so when they confronted him with this information and the conclusions that they were drawing, like it's, they're like, "There's only one thing that we can think about what the, from this scene, like from the evidence that's here, like you killed and you ate your family." Apparently, like it, he he kind of just confessed to it, and it wasn't like it, I, it, from what we could tell, it wasn't like a, like a blubbering like breakdown. It was just kind of him explaining to them that apparently he he tried to explain that he had initially only meant to eat his His eldest son that he had slaughtered in order to feed the rest of the family. But once he committed that first act, he said that a Wendigo spirit had descended upon him. And he made the choice of what was easy to kill, kill one of his family members to eat. And And then just kept going. But he did say like he had that spirit in his head the entire time talking to him, telling him to do it. Yeah. Uh, and so some further background about this, which I thought was interesting, just from a historical perspective, is that you have the the, the sent this this case is interesting not only that, you know, from the grizzly perspective and, and that whole thing that, that happened, but it's actually the police, since they'd only been out there for about five years, they'd never actually conducted an execution. Like they'd never tried somebody and been like, We're going to execute you for murder. That's yeah, something that hadn't first- happened yet. <laughs> this is the first execution in Northwest Territories history, which yeah. at the time this was considered the Northwest Territories, which we now know as Alberta. But yeah, it was. Uh, so they had to they had to build an entire gallows uh, in the um, the fort enclosure of Fort Saskatchewan, and then they had like an old army pensioner named Rogers, and they made him hangman. Like they didn't have an actual execution or any of that, so they just kind of brought him out there. And so on December twentieth, you know, Swift Runner uh, was you know after he had been arraigned and pretty much they were like, "This is case closed." Like we were, yeah, you you're said kidding. it. <laughs> well, so the night the night before that he was to be hung or hanged um they offered him they're like would you like to spend the night with the with a priest and he replied uh the white man has ruined me i don't think their god could amount to much and then as they walked him out to the gallows he looked at them and said um he said i could kill myself with a tomahawk and save the hangman further trouble Jesus, yeah. like, st- and just this, like Dan said, like apparently that's not dead guy straight. was dead straight, showing no emotion whatsoever. 
Yeah, it is. Uh, th- that's one of the the stranger cases. Of course, that's the one that's probably most people mention when they talk about the Wendigo because it's it's one of those. It reminds me. It reminds me a lot of it's like the, the Amityville. One. Well, it also reminds me of the Amityville case where it's like the devil made me do it. Like is yeah. what you go to, but it's not necessarily like for that one. That was like an actual defense that they tried to do. Like the devil made me do it. This one is like he's like, no, nah, I know I did it, and yeah. Like it's the Wendigo, you know, at least the first one, like even then it's like, you still would have been tried for murder. You killed your son. And then it's like, <laughs> you killed him. And then the rest was Wendigo, which is, you know, just damning in itself. You're just, yeah. Um, but apparently that's not the only case that the, the Wendigo factors into. Yeah. So this, we're going to kind of, uh, talk about the other end. We're going to get into a little bit of possibly the, uh, the Van Helsing mm. of Wendigo lore. Uh, Jack Fiddler, who became, he was a famous shaman for his alleged ability to conjure animals and protect his people from spells. Most importantly to the people of the region, he could allegedly successfully defeat the Wendigo. In his life, Jack Fiddler claimed to have defeated 14 Wendigos. Apparently, some were sent against his people by enemy shamans, and others were members of his own band who were taken with an an insatiable, incurable desire to consume human flesh. In the latter case, Fiddler would usually usually ask by family members to kill a very sick loved one uh, right before they turned to a Wendigo. In some cases, the Wendigo himself would come to Fiddler and ask to be euthanized. Um, so basically, this guy has got a kill count of 14 Wendigos, right? I, which I would think is fucking super super impressive that's a world record um, right there so the hpc <laughs> the hpc know, yeah. as we all know here the hudson bay company right yeah uh traders cree and missionaries were all well aware of the Wend- wendigo legend though they were often explained it as a mental illness or superstitions um regardless several incidents of people being turned into wed- wendigos and eating human flesh were documented um Jack Fiddler's reputation also grew amongst these groups, and he was approached multiple times by Cree ministers at uh, Island Lake and asked to bring Christianity to his people. Though he re- respectfully heard their request, Fiddler did not convert. So he's already starting, you know, sounds like he's kind of getting a fucking a poor rub by these guys because he's not taking Christianity. Because yeah. what happens? Well, if you next? take, well, if you convert to Christianity, you lose all your Wendigo killing powers. Like, well, that's what yeah. I'm saying. So why are we trying to force them into this? Like, I don't know. Yeah. I, I one of Jesus's miracles was not killing. Yeah, 14 Jesus Wendigos. didn't kill it. Yeah, Jesus that's didn't kill I'm fourteen saying. Wendigos. I don't think so. So I don't see yeah, any, don't see I any mean, apostles killing Wendigos. Like, yeah, he's turning <laughs> water to wine. He know his yeah. his powers useless useless in the Pacific Northwest. There is no God here. <laughs> um, so in early 1907, two members of the Northwest Mounted Police heard of Jack Fiddler's powers against the Wendigo from one of uh, Fiddler's in-laws. Seeking to introduce Canadian law in the North, the Mounties went and arrested Jack Fiddler for murder. The Mounties were the, uh, the... So the interesting, too, is the Mounties were the first white people that these tribes had ever seen. And then they just show up like fucking Dudley do right and start fucking <laughs> tension guys. Hey, good day. Hey. Um, Excuse me. You're September- under arrest. <laughs> yeah. Um, on September 30th, Jack Fiddler escaped captivity during a walk outside and then proceeded to hung himself later that day. <laughs> he escaped during a walk outside. Sounds like he was already escaped. Well, you know, he's, he's, he's like, hey, can, can I go for a day pass? He invented the jailbreak. It wasn't even a fathom before. They're like, he's like, hey, can I go for a walk? They're like, yeah, sure, eh? Hey, Score. you gonna come back? You gonna yeah. come back? Hey, hey, I think he, I don't think he's gonna come back. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> he's just, he's just booking it over like They're a like, hill. He's like, well, no. Is he planning to come back? Oh, no, he looks like he's gonna turn. No, he's gonna keep going. Oh, okay. <laughs> we better get the horses. <laughs> but yeah, that's the story. Jack Fiddler. That was pretty badass. Jack, Jack Fiddler. Fiddler. Window go hunter. Supposedly he did get some justice in the past though. Like they so he was sentenced to whatever life and he was gonna be hung. And then after they went through his case and he was exonerated because like he had several people, including members of like the policing community and stuff that came forward being like, No, like this guy helped sick people and like they wanted to be euthanized. He helped them and then but, yeah, he gave <laughs> them they're like, That's murder, that eh? That's what we hey, call buddy. that. <laughs> Listen, but that's this is very Canadian because this is just the maid program which we are now introducing back yeah. in fucking the 1900s. Yeah, he was doing it. Yeah, 
Yeah. The forefather of it. He, he's like, he's like, all right, I'll get my tools. <laughs> yeah. Which um, is what back then? <laughs> fucking big rock. Oh well, he, he would just mix it up, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, he's like, I'm going to so, try something new on you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so this, this particular, this particular, these particular cases and stuff like that, that Jack Fiddler probably had been, um, dealing with or, you know, participated in, uh, there is, there is such a thing as Wendigo syndrome, which addresses this, like the specific type of what they classify as a type of psychosis, um, or psychological condition, uh, when set in this specific cultural context of the, uh, the North Lake, uh, the Great Lakes regions and, and those areas, and so it, it so it's primarily associated with the indigenous peoples who who live in those areas, particularly the Algonquin tribes. Um, now, Wendigo psychosis is usually characterized by several psychological and behavioral symptoms, um, which can the combinations can vary from uh, among different individuals. But these are some of the common ones to look after or look for. So these are some of the things look out that for <laughs> look out for. Um, so uh, an intense and compulsive desire to consume human flesh even in the absence of food scarcity. So, mm. you know, if you're, if your buddy is telling them that you're not, you know, I feel like just having a little bit of nibble yeah. on this. Quick, uh, quick bite. Uh, you, yeah, ever, yeah. you ever thought what it tastes like? <laughs> it's, well, it's like, this... why don't we just order a pizza? No, you know what? That's not going to hit the spot. Oh, I want know, some just... fava beans and a fine Chianti. Yeah. Just eat this. yeah. <laughs> Um, delusions or hallucinations of turning into a Wendigo or being pursued by one um, it can, can often happen. Uh, you have a distorted body image. Uh, so individuals can usually perceive themselves as being emaciated or transforming into some type of like skeletal figure. Uh, there's the increased aggression and paranoia, uh, social withdrawal and isolation, uh, insomnia and sleep disturbances. And then usually there's a, a loss of touch or some type of loss of touch with reality, like uh, distancing yourself from that. Um, so I think that we've a, a pretty popular Canadian uh, case was actually, a tri it should actually be attributed to the Wendigo. And as I'm going to bring it up and you guys are going to be like, wait a sec, that kind of makes a little bit of sense. So on the 30th, July, 2008, Tim McLean, a 22 year old Canadian uh, man was stabbed, beheaded and cannibalized while riding a Greyhound wow. bus along the trans Canada highway. He was cannibalized. I don't think that. Yeah. He was the killer was 40 year old Chinese Canadian, Vincent Lee. Witnesses say the attacker seemed oblivious to the others when he was, when the stabbing occurred, added, he was, he was struck by Lee's calm demeanor. There was no rage or anything. He was like a robot stabbing that guy. When he appeared in a, I don't know what the fuck that means. But anyways, literally like the, the accounts of this guy. So he, he murders him in his sleep in front of everybody, completely monotone on a moving robotic, bus. whatever. Yeah. Everybody gets the fuck off the bus. And they just hold and the then door. They're like, Holy they God. hold the door closed and Lee proceeds to walk to the doors and try to open them while holding McLean's severed head in his hand. Like, awful. I don't want to go too much into detail, right? But he's completely, like, no remorse, no nothing for this, right? Complete psychotic. Totally. Um, and, like, the the killer for, the, for me is the fact that this guy, what, like, he was up back on the street in five years? Yeah. After this? Totally fine. Five years. Did, no, did no he eat him? In. Yes. He, oh, sorry. Oh. Yes. He, sorry. He he yeah, I was like, where's the eating part? <laughs> he, yeah, no, he, he was like this. He was like, ah, oh, yeah, he was, okay. No, like a hundred. Ah, yeah, that, that was. The he was like flesh or he drank the blood? He eating he flesh. flesh. He was chewing on the head and stuff. Just like yeah. chewing on yeah. the. And he was cutting oh. strips off the guy. Mm. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. We said we were going to get the, but you asked. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I just, uh, we said that he was cannibalizing. This is a real story. This did happen. Yeah. You look up all the details. Well, uh, yeah, this is absolutely hundred percent real, and it like everything, every symptom that Dan said, literally, other head. than yeah, like it's and and in five and years, he's like traveling he his, the right area. Yeah, yes, yeah, he he definitely was, and it's like in five years, he's like he's totally fine. He's out, new name, and no further issues. Canada, right? 
That's Canada for That's you. Canadian That's fucking Dudley Do-Right letting yeah. Buddy go out for a walk. <laughs> <laughs> like, fucking yeah. cool. Um, Awful. Now, another one. Andrew actually sent me this. He just... I'll pre- preface this with... He didn't feel comfortable reading it, and he wanted a superior reader to read it. I'll aloud. fucking read it right now. <laughs> Fuck you. Give it to right? me. So, so he said that. Uh, he said that, and then he sent no, it to I'm me. Just to lazy. Read. Yeah. He said Dan um, should just, read it. No, yeah. no, no said, that, that did not say. Yeah. Uh, so this we all is, know Braden is the strongest reader. Yeah, this one is uh, guys at the grade eight level. It's good. Uh, well, if you think about it, in the last seven years, because I've doing been practicing so much reading, I've actually gotten much better. Oh, no, you're good, started. dude. When we did yeah. those ad reads the other day, you fucking nailed. Yeah, it, like, I'm first back. Time. I'm back up yeah. to a grade eleven. You started reading level when we started the show. Yeah. You were better. Then you took a dip for about four years, and then you've climbed back out of the hole. Yeah, yeah. I think it's because all they? the cosmetic adjustments he made, like to the nose and teeth and stuff. Uh, yeah, like, yeah, I think yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's really fixed. Yeah. fucking get yeah. used yeah. to his new that hands. Checks. That checks out. Yeah. Uh, so this, this, uh, I hesitate to call this sighting a hearing, I guess a hearing, a hearing, um, (laughs) group of hunters, um, in the middle of the Northwestern Ontario, middle of the bush, 50 kilometers from the closest town, uh, Gino Mikis, uh, is hunting grouse with his wife and grandson when they hear a series of eerie noises in the distance. Uh, And I quote, when it let out the first scream, I thought it was a moose, but my mind changed when it screamed again and again. Uh, He goes, I've heard many different animals in the wild, but nothing like this. I grew up Mm. hunting with my grandfather uh, for the first 12 years of my life. The howls initially came from the distance, but they soon appeared to move much closer, uh, said Mikas. We could hear it moving. It kind of sounded heavy. Um, But my wife, she got scared. We picked up our grandson, and we started to head toward the vehicle. Uh, That's when Mikas pulls out his phone, and he goes, listen, I got to get some of this shit. Like, this is wild. And he records uh, what is that. And some people speculate could potentially be uh, a Wendigo. So I'm going to you. A Wendigo. I literally, on the break, went upstairs to like go to the bathroom and referred to the shit. Jess asked what we're talking about. Oh, we're talking about the Wendigo. Fuck! Yeah. And if there's anything now. that I've uh, given to the world in this case file, it's that whenever you listen to this, you will now refer to it as the Wendigo uh, <laughs> from here on out. It's, yeah, a, it's half, hard not to say a half it half dog hybrid yeah. version of <laughs> new, new cryptid. Yeah. Uh, let's listen to this here. Uh, let me know if it's loud enough. Oh, hold on. Do I have it set so you can hear it? I don't know. Can you guys hear this? No. Yeah. Oh, there it goes. I heard the, like, one howl. I said it. I said it. There's a bunch. Again. Oh yeah, no, I don't like that. <laughs> I, do, I don't like that. I don't like that. No, mm, no. Goodbye. That's fucking horrifying. No, 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 no. What the fuck is that, dude? I hear that in the middle of the woods. I'm fucking booking it. They, I'm, I'm done with that shit. Like wildlife experts, everybody have listened to this, and they're like, we can't, def- we sure. can't identify what that is. Slap that grandkid right now. This isn't put, funny. Put him in a straight up headlock with my arm around his mouth. Well, shut here's somebody. Shut up. Somebody's yelping. So maybe you know one of the family members is getting the fucking itch. Took a bite of somebody's forearm. Yeah, right. Fucking, there it is again. Like it's oh going nonstop. God. I not like that. Yeah, like I know, I know, I saw some of the things, like some wildlife experts, like, oh, it might be like a grizzly bear. Or it's like, not a grizzly. It, it's not a grizzly bear, or Almost you know, sounds like it could some be like a really big wolf. Maybe yeah, like that's what they said too. Like I've heard, I've heard, I've heard wolves. I've heard them. I heard them. Yeah. I've. That's not what they sound like. I've never heard anything like that. That's what I'm saying. I'm just coming up with things that make me feel better. I was just I'm saying like, what I've heard. Okay. Like I was just like. Yeah, I'd be mm. now. Like it, this, that's that. non-stop, relentless. Yeah, 
No, that That's a weird like a wolf. wolf. That kind of sounds like a wolf. <laughs> <laughs> the start was more eerie than the end of yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so that's uh, that's yeah. I still northern, yeah. Northwestern like Ontario. That. I've never like heard that. anything like that in the woods. I've heard I've heard wolves howling over. How was that still playing? Why is it still playing? Oh, give me oh, the heebie. Now you got the Wendigo spirit in your um, in your house. Like I've heard coyotes, you know, going after kale. I've heard moose, deer, bear. Uh, I've never heard that. No, that's not a. Fun, that's just like yeah. I I wouldn't want to hear that. Especially, it's like it's so loud. Like it's, it could be pretty far booming. away, but it's like it it's is fucking booming. It resonates, and I'm just, I would not be happy hearing what? that. And that's the thing with <laughs> hearing it that woods. loud, and, it, and it's like out in the woods like that because you don't exactly. You're like, is that really far, or is it yeah. closer? Yeah. Then I think saying like, is it is it carrying is it carrying like, and it's like, or is it closer? I'd be like, is it just right over in that that copse of woods over there? It's like right (laughs) across the way there, or is it way farther out? I'd fucking leave. I'd be like, we're going home. (laughs) We're done. Pack it in. It's absolutely (laughs) terrifying. You're almost Um, obligated at that point to venture out into the woods with cameras recording. No, and try and find with your grandkid. Not really. With your grandkid. Use them as bait. Yeah. Well, I mean, the Wendigo is going to get him first. That's what yeah. I mean. Use them so as bait, fair. then run. Get away. Kid. Yeah. It's not your fault. Yeah. You're not going to survive. You're not both going to survive anyway. I mean, it's not your kid. It's your kid's kid. So it's like, yeah. uh, it's either him. Is there a lot of attachment there? It's either him or both of you. <laughs> yeah, so, like, sorry. I mean, one, I guess. Yeah. Well, I mean, listen, we'll be, if we're being honest, you're probably tripping your wife. Yeah. Was she there, though? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. He said yeah. she oh, walked okay. across the screen in the first place. Yeah. Grandma ain't making it back. Yeah. Gone. Gotta keep the bloodline alive. <laughs> Terrifying. Um, yeah, that is fucking weird. Yeah, I'm not into it. A lot of weird shit in the woods. I, yeah. I, I'll be honest with you. Got into this. Got in the lore. Everything like that. Definitely would not have suggested this if I would have known about Swift Runner. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, if you if like if you're one of those people that are really interested in the gruesome and gory oh. details, um. Hashtag it's, look it up because it is fucking no, terrible. I'm sure there's bad. tons of true crime podcasts. On. No, but there's like the, like whatever the account, I don't know where it came from because I didn't want to get any further. But like the 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 detail of it, like he goes into exact detail on how he did everything, and, yeah. everything, and it is like it's brutal. Yeah, yeah. It, it made my my fast today that much easier. Yeah, it, yeah. It was definitely shocking and disturbing. So if yeah. that's your thing, uh, hashtag look it up. Uh, yeah, fill your boots. Because uh. <laughs> it is, it's definitely like one of the more savage cryptids that we, we talk about. Like, I don't think anything, in my opinion, like even poltergeists and you know that kind of stuff. Like they all have a kind of a fun. Like, yeah, look at that. Tip that over. This is like legitimately. Fucking terrifying through and through, like everything yeah. about it. Like it's the it most is... evil cryptid we've talked about. Yeah, this, is the, this might be the most evil thing we've talked about. Yeah, I uh, I wholeheartedly agree. Terrifying. Yeah. This is if I if you're like which is the least the one you don't want to run into. This is it. I mean, hundred percent. Pr- yeah, pretty much anything that has to do with cannibalism is gonna be pretty bad. Yeah, <laughs> like, especially uh, this this creature uh, the the. Like it's 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 the way that it's the what the things and acts that it's associated with are all just like real bad. Well, especially if it takes <laughs> like let's just say like say it like once it once it convinces you uh, to do a terrible deed and then it grasps you, then if you're just like if you're just a uh, like a vessel for it to do these terrible acts and you're just present, like as a as like so like you can't control your this thing is now like puppet mastering you and you're just watching just in horror as you commit atrocities like you're conscious but not in control inside yeah and you're just like i can't i can't control it and the worst thing is it doesn't kill you after no it just leaves you (laughs) just left it goes that explain that bitch yeah good luck that's fucking terrifying i definitely would not want uh 1010 would not recommend Stay away. <laughs> Stay away from human flesh. Stay away from that that little Stay voice from... in your si- in, in your head. Do it. Now, Stay away from Alberta. Stay away from <laughs> like east of the Rocky Mountains. <laughs> yeah. Now, hypothetical, away. if you were in a plane crash, does knowing about the Wendigo stories um, stop you or even make you hesitate for a second 
I need to, you in a second. Uh, carving off, <laughs> to, uh, carving off a frozen chunk You're of, uh, I don't of think ass I meat. The, I don't think so. I'd be the first to die. I'd be getting eaten for sure. I would. I'd have no problem eating you to survive. Zero problem. Yeah, I don't See, eat, so it begins. I can't do it. So it begins. The Wendigo has already got his <laughs> fing- already got his fingers in Zell. Uh, yeah. I think so. I think I think push come to stuff if his like survival's on the line. I would definitely. Am I going to try and kill like, you to eat you? No, but it, if you die, but if you die, <laughs> if you die of say an accident that a potential accident <laughs> may happen, I could. I, I tried a muscle the other day. I couldn't do it. Do anything. Anything oh, fra- the, flame the grilled slimy, is fine. Just, yeah, like, yeah, spit it out. Like, flame no, grilled is good. I can't do it. Just fucking char it up. It's yeah. I, I I think in the. I think if push came to shove, I feel like I would exhaust. Like I, we would have to be like getting down to like the hey. I think we got to do this now. There's there's no food because I'm pretty crafty. I feel like I could, you know, if I was in the woods like ha- old hatchet yeah, style, I feel like I could, you know. Yeah, but like, like Brian, is there is no food. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's nothing. Yeah, especially nothing. in the winter. Fuck, you're fucked. Yeah, so, I, mean, I don't know. It's I, don't, uh, I just don't have it. It's so vivid in my head because I watched that fucking show Yellow Jackets. And yeah, I just started watching that. I, I fucking turned. I was like, eh, I think we're done with this. I don't have the fucking. It's too much for me. Dan, push come to sub. You, you could eat. What do you think? You're stuck I mean, in a Canadian winter. Meat is meat. Yeah. I, Dan knows. <laughs> yeah. Three to one. Yeah. Three Wendigos to one. If you guys survive, we got to so do it. We know who's getting eaten. Soul. Yep. <laughs> it really depends who dies first, though. Would that be the pact? Is that the pact? If we're flying anywhere for a pod trip, we all die. It's we all try to hold out, and then the first one to die, the other three can eat. For sure, the pact. Say that now. Well, it's definitely it's definitely like I am not dying first. There's no way. What if you die of injuries? Yeah, Uh, yeah. I mean, like we can't let him go bad. If we we can't let it go bad, better eat it now. Yeah, survive. We gotta survive. If we're if we're, yeah, you guys are feasting, you all leave fucking plumper than you. Than you it's like we got in. plenty of rations and stuff over here. We found the tail of the plane. Yeah. Now nah, let's eat Braden first. Like, let's, yeah. let's get it out of the way. Might as well carve him <laughs> up. It's fucking keto. I got high protein. It's, uh, it. if, no, like hypothetical, if, we, if the plane went down <laughs> and we were all unscathed, right? I, I would say I would last the longest per starvation. Like I don't think, I think I got the most to lose, so I think I would last the longest. Because you're saying you have the most sure reserves. That's how it works. You got the reserves. I got the most reserves. Yeah, I'm not sure that works. I think that is how it works. I think you would you would burn three to one pounds though, because you got so much. I'd be able to. I'd be able to outlast you. I think. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll see. I, who knows? Well, there's only one way to find out, I guess. If we have to all, be like, you're going to be burning situation. more calories to move your fucking frame. That's what I mean. You're need to yeah, but I wouldn't. Yeah. I would go into instantly like Eagle hibernation, hibernation mode. Just like <laughs> yeah. I just like kind of fucking wiggle into the snowbank a little bit and just be like, all right, I'll kick it back. I got at least four or five days. So I have to do. Oh, you sur- I mean, it, yeah, you got longer. You got long, unless you freeze to death. You got longer that's longer. Well, yeah. I, I, at the five day mark, I might be like, okay, maybe I should make a shelter or something. Oh, like you're just not going to move for five days. I'm just not going to move. No, no. I'm going to fucking cozy into a bank somewhere, Dirt a little bossy bank. You're going to let us do the work. <laughs> We're going to build a shelter, us. and then you're like, you oh, me, fucker. good job. And then yeah. you'll come wiggling out, rolling on over. <laughs> wiggling into the shelter. <laughs> you nice guys work, cold? Man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's uh, Wendigo's fucking terrifying. So... If you learned anything tonight, it's hey, that it's now called Wendingo. Wendingo. I think we're built to survive, though. We got people that know how to build shelters. We got Dan, who could be a MacGyver. We got me, I can do medical stuff. Like, we're freaking pretty we're I, good crew. Like, and we're going to no, be eating other people. No yeah, knock we, on you, Andrew. I feel like, and Dan, I haven't camped with you, but I have a feeling in that mode, uh, it would become, you guys would be leaning heavily on me and Zell. Um, this was what this is like. This is like, yeah, you guys buddy, laugh at me now. I'd be like, oh, you laugh me in the real world, not anymore. <laughs> buddy, I listen, bend over. I know how to count now. I got it sorted. I got a fucking little, I got, He's got a trailer. trailer. He's got, 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 got it sorted. Yeah, got it. It's got a hot, like, I think, in, I think, enclosed trailer. I think for like adult men, I think we do okay. Like, how long do you think if we let's say we we crash in the summer, 
because winter winter is a fucking wild card. We probably all die anyways from exposure. Right, yeah. Turn. Listen, we're all dying in the fucking plane crash for being Number, yeah. Most, yeah. <laughs> so at like, least right? at least three of us are dying. In the, at least three, if not all. At least. Yeah. But then, say we don't. Say we land in a lake, perfect belly, right? Like down. We, we get a Captain Sully brings us down. Fucking hatchet. He, he Gary, dies. Gary pa- oh, is it Gary Paulson? Gary Paulson. Yeah, hatchet. With yeah, Brian, hatchet. Brian survives. Right. Yeah. We we've got a we got a fucking pocket knife and shit. Like I think I feel like if we landed in the summer. We might have a chance at surviving. Oh yeah. If you land in the winter, I think you're No, anybody is gonna die. <laughs> yeah, you're in for a real opportunity. Unless you drop with a Sorry, severe fine. like some a good reserve of supplies, you tell Yeah. But if you're in the summer, I think we could be like, Okay, we're in we're we're in trouble. We need to we need to make a shelter, we need to get this, we gotta get fires going. I think we I think we could be okay. Be fine. If we, it depends what supplies we're. There's a lot of variables. Like what supplies we dropped with? We got lighters, or we have, or we fucking like. Chipping, uh, chipping okay, like like sparks. like two like two lighters, two lighters yeah. and like a, like a stuff. pocket knife. We got basic <laughs> yeah. stuff. We got a leather yeah, like and a couple a, leatherman and a lighter, and a couple bicks. Okay, right? Because I'm I'm I just think that like I'm like oh you know what I think we could, I think I think. I think we'd actually quite enjoy ourselves for the first little while till winter. We'd be like, hey, like after about a couple of weeks, we'd be like, yeah, this is pretty nice. Keep back. We got fish. Like, yeah, well, if you can awesome. catch fish, you, if we got, if yeah, you got a hook, how are we can catch a fish? A lot of variables here, but I, yeah, I think we, we'd have fun for about three days and then we'd start killing each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the wind, the, the wind dingo would take over every time someone separates from group, kill the rest of them. <laughs> yeah. We're getting, we're getting a little bit of food. Like we're, we're getting like a few hundred calories a day by day three. We're all so hangry. Someone's getting killed. Someone get murdered. Yeah. Yeah. Whoops. He fell. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. Well, next time on the theorist crush a thon. <laughs> Four theorists in the woods. There's only room for one survivor. Um, <laughs> but that's it. I think that's all. That's all we got for Wendigo. Anything? Anything else on Wendigo before we? Oh. Just a terrifying cryptid, and uh, don't give in to the don't, urge. Don't eat people. Yeah. Kids. Don't eat. Don't people. eat people. Don't go into the woods. And if you hear people calling in the woods, it sounds like if you if you get that, let them die. If you get that, the hair on your neck stand up. Don't go. Listen, Listen to your yeah, gut. Trust it. Uh, if you're not supporting the show already, you want early access to the case files, ad free, all our bonus stuff. You got to go to alientheorist.com. You got to hit that support tab. Subscribe. Listen, you got to support us before we start eating each other, right? You don't want us to turn into one day. Have right? you seen those grocery prices? It's We're fucking big. one step from the edge here, here especially. But... Be a whole country of fucking wind dangers, you know? <laughs> Yeah, no <laughs> kidding. Thirty-seven million of us fucking trying to eat each other here pretty quick. <laughs> Uh, this this week's new supporters we have Tenko, Rhea, Drew Pearson, Dude Man, fucking dope, Dude Man. Yeah, that's a good name. Was it, what was that? What was the superhero? He Man. He Man. Yeah, it's a dude, dude man. man. The next evolution. Catherine Green and Jacob Leahy. I think that actually is that. Is that Mr. Leahy's son? Perhaps. Here in the torch, in the torch. Um, and if you want to watch us live, you want to hang out on ATT Live, you can check it out. Uh, the next ones, uh, June eleventh, and then June twenty fifth, six thirty p.m. Pacific Standard Time, only on YouTube. And as we always say at the end of these things, keep those eyes on the skies. See you next time.
Yep. Yeah. 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 Um, 